Hello, beautiful soul. Michelle McCoy here with an update on my healing journey. And I'm going to combine this video with a video that I filmed, I guess, over a month ago. I filmed my um, two week through four week healing journey, and I just never got around to editing and posting it. So now I'm at eight weeks since my injury. So I'm just going to put it all together. Lately, I have really been reminding myself that the comeback is always stronger than the setback. Constantly telling myself this over and over all day long. Um, so my injury happened while hiking. I go into that more in my first video. So this video is just going to kind of give you an update on where I'm at now along my healing journey. So week three, I really started to turn a corner in my pain level and just like how I could function throughout the day. And at first I had a lot of pain um, during bowel movements. I would literally cry when I had to have a bowel movement or when I sneezed or even just coughing hurt. Um, and I went into the anatomy of this a little bit in my first video, but the tailbone is at the very bottom of your spine, right below the sacrum. And my first week, within the first week after my injury, I had an x-ray done at MedExpress, an urgent care clinic, and the x-ray showed that it was not fractured. Um, however, I just saw my family practitioner for the first time regarding this injury today, like an hour ago. And he said that this type of injury is really hard to detect like a fracture or a torn ligament or a type of hernia in that area or, or anything like that just from an XRI, from, a, <laughs> from an X-ray. And that really, um, to look at it, clearly you have to have an MRI. So that's news to me. I wish I had known that earlier, but he's going to get one scheduled. That can take weeks to get it approved and scheduled with the hospital. And so I'm just feeling kind of anxious with this new waiting period. In week four, I started to get a little cocky because my pain seemed to be improving. I was like, okay, I'm doing better. I eased into doing some gentle yoga, which felt amazing to get back on my mat. I started not icing it as much. I stopped taking ibuprofen for the most part. I started driving longer distances. I wasn't stretching every day um, like I did the first two weeks. I would do some stretches for my glutes and my hamstrings. and. I would forget to take curcumin, um, which is pretty much turmeric and anti-inflammatory. Um, I was playing with my kids. I was lifting heavy things. And then from doing that, I eventually noticed that my pain level was increasing again. And it's kind of been like this crazy battle of trying to find my body's limitations and tuning into my body. And I've also been um, really pursuing some holistic healing techniques. I mentioned in my last video that I'm reading this book, How to Heal Yourself. So I'm still working through this book and it is helpful. Um, I've also gotten a bunch of other books. I've started back on my gratitude practice, which always helps with healing anything and really any struggles in life, just coming back to a gratitude mindset. I've also been um, continuing counseling. So I have a, a therapist that I've been seeing for years and the last month we've obviously been focusing on coping mechanisms that I can use while healing. So that therapy is just always something that I uh, very strongly believe in. Other holistic um, techniques that I'm using is, I've been wanting to do this forever and I just finally did it. I created a sacred place in my room where I have a little table where I have set out 
a whole bunch of um, a whole bunch of things that are very meaningful to me and that can help bring me healing, like um, certain joyful pictures to look at, um, my singing bowls, my steel tongue drum. It's kind of like my little place to meditate on getting better. The last couple weeks I've also really been working hard on improving my diet, cutting out inflammatory foods, cutting back on my sugar and processed foods, eating a lot more veggies and fruits, but you even have to be careful with those because certain veggies and fruits can cause um, inflammation and that is the number one thing that I want to avoid right now. Um, I've also been dairy free for a long time and that's a natural inflammatory, so I'm sure that's helping. I've started um, juicing again. I broke out my juicer. <laughs> it's been put away for literally like two years. So that's nice and I'm getting my kids into that too and just making some healthy smoothies. So I'm also trying to rekindle my connection to the earth. As I mentioned in my first video, going hiking and exploring and spending solitude in nature has always been like just something that my soul needs. It's my church. And when this injury happened, I kind of like stopped liking nature, <laughs> like held a grudge against it and didn't trust it anymore. And I was afraid to do anything outside. <laughs> so I've slowly been like working through that fear and the fear of re-injuring myself. So another major thing that I have been working on is allowing myself to be sad and not to feel guilty for it. And especially as a mother and a wife um, and having two little kids and a household to run and cooking that needs to be due and, and all the things, um, it's brought me a lot of guilt not being able to do so many of those things. I mean, from picking my kids up to school, from school sometimes, to folding laundry, to getting off the couch sometimes. I just have to like lay on the couch and ice my butt <laughs> and um, take deep breaths to avoid panic attacks and meditate and take my inflammatory medicines. And, and for the longest time up until this point, I was not allowing myself to feel the emotional impact of this injury and I was beating myself up over it. So every time I have a setback, like I did in week four, I beat myself up. And I came across this quote in one of my books that emotional recovery is never linear. And I have to almost um, expect setbacks physically, emotionally, and to really work on keeping myself grounded, continuing my holistic um, practices and my physical practices, stretching, gentle yoga. So just a quick recap, in week three, I started to feel like I was turning a corner. In week four, I overdid it and took like 10 steps back. And now my pain level is, um, kind of back to where it was, but I'm a lot more careful with what I do with my body. I'm a lot more in tune of my limitations. And um, it's still very, very tender. I mean, the bottom of my spine, right up to my lower back and my glutes and my hamstrings, I still get some tingling down my legs. That's one of the reasons that my doctor that I saw today wants to get an MRI to see if there's any sort of nerve damage because again the tailbone is connected to so many um, ligaments and tendons and nerves and uh, there's just so much that an x-ray can't see <laughs> apparently. Um, so hopefully I'll have some information from my MRI to include in my next video. I just like 10 minutes ago, came from the hospital. I had my MRI done, finally, and all that was fine. Um, but now I'm gonna be anxiously awaiting the results. They're gonna fax it over to my doctor, and um, I don't know if I need to go in for an appointment, or they're gonna call me over the phone to give me the results or what, but I'm just like today feeling really anxious about <laughs> getting the results. I still have my hospital bracelet on. 
Um, ugh, okay, so pretty much at eight weeks now, wow, two months since the injury, I am almost back to normal life. Um, I'm able to function throughout my day and work and play with my kids and drive and sit and um, I still use my pillow a lot, especially when I'm sitting for long periods of time or on hard surfaces, so I'm using it right now. But if I'm like sitting in bed or on the couch or anything like that, I don't usually need it anymore. Um, it, it's more of like a, the type of pain has changed. It's not as much an intense, sharp pain. It's more of like an achy, annoying, dull pain now. So it's kind of feels like I have like a rock at the bottom of my spine that just won't go away. Like I just always feel it there. A week and a half ago, I was playing with my boys in our living room and I was just like being silly and um, I like hopped or like skipped or did something like that. And I got this terrible shooting sharp pain right in my tailbone and it took my breath away for a few seconds and I just like grabbed my back and my husband was like, are you okay? And I was like, no, <laughs> not okay. So that kind of like made my pain level increase for a while for, for like four or five days at least. And so I got really frustrated because I was like, all right, am I never gonna be able to jump <laughs> the rest of my life? I'm two months now past the injury and little things like this will still trigger this terrible sharp pain. I haven't really hooped a whole lot in the last two months, honestly. Um, in my last video, at the end of shooting that video, I hooped for the first time that I had since my injury. And it, it like was just not flowy. It just felt like I had to be like all in my head and thinking about everything that I was doing, like all the moves I was doing and everything to avoid the moves that might hurt it. Like obviously no jump throws. Um, I, I've been avoiding wedgies because I don't, I just don't want to like do any twists or, you know, this movement. <laughs> um, I haven't been doing any like, um, one leg hooping or anything that requires me to like stomp my leg back down or any like sudden movements that would like jolt my spine. Anywho, I've kind of at this point just gotten used to this injury being part of my life and some days it's more irritable and I'm just like, all right, I'm gonna ice it a few times today and um, take it easy and not put as much pressure on my butt, walk a little bit more. Um, and I don't get as emotionally upset because it's been two months and I've had to work through a lot of emotions and I'm sick of feeling them <laughs> every day. So that's progress, right? And then another thing I'm doing is I've started to really throw myself into new exciting projects and routines. So this has really helped me to um, keep my focus on moving forward and improving myself um, in other ways outside of the physical realm since I can't really have that my focus right now. So one of the things that I have really started to enjoy is working and caring for our vegetable garden. And we got herbs and all sorts of awesome stuff that my kids will actually eat, like green things that they will pick out of the garden and eat. It blows my mind every time. But um, caring for a garden just, I feel like a boost in my mood and it forces me to get outside every day. And it's been really fun to do it as a family and get my kids involved. I have also really started reading a whole lot more lately. In addition to these books, I have literally purchased like 25 books in the last two months. It's ridiculous. But if it's books, it's not hoarding. I saw that on a t-shirt the other day. And reading is well known for reducing stress and anxiety. And I do it a lot before I go to bed. Um, so it helps me sleep better and it calms my body and my mind. And because I'm reading more, 
I am on social media a whole lot less. So I have been amazed by the difference of having less screen time. Um, it has given me a lot more focus. It has given me more of like a sense of reclaiming myself as a person and <laughs> not always comparing myself to this person over here and then this person over here and this person over here. So less screen time has been amazing for me and it has actually really encouraged me to seek out um, other things to like fill that time so that I'm not just picking up my phone whenever, whenever I'm bored and like browsing through something. I just started um, a bullet journal like a week ago. I have it right here. It's so pretty and covered in ants. My bullet journal. This has been like my new um, favorite thing in the world. So starting this bullet journal has really um, given me a new creative outlet. It has inspired new ideas. It has encouraged and motivated me to stay productive and stay organized and gives me um, some peace of mind because like most creative people, I am not organized. <laughs> and I've tried all of these different task management platforms on a computer and I just, I don't have the best relationship with the computer and I like to journal and I used to scrapbook a lot and be creative so, you know, that's where this comes in. And this has been a great distraction <laughs> for me from the things that are limited that I can't do as much right now and um, my injury with my tailbone. It's just, this is the first thing that I have started that I am proud of that makes me feel very productive and driven since my injury because I've just been feeling so defeated and kind of like worthless, honestly. Um, I've been struggling with that since my injury. All of these new things that I'm throwing myself into have really increased um, my productivity and my sense of purpose in life. And I've just kind of gotten used to like the funny faces I get from people carrying around my special pillow and but yeah, that's, I'm gonna leave you with that for some reason. So anyways, that's it. I will be back to you with my MRI results hopefully soon. And um, hopefully someday I'll be able to jump again.